Um, the gentlemen who are with me are here of their own free will. We did not actually, you know, like just grab black males and say, come on, come on, come on. We need diversity here at the NRA. The, the mass media is convinced that, that there are no Ken Blanchards here, that there are no Rick Ectors here. You know, they, they are convinced that, that the NRA annual meeting is comprised entirely 100% of uh, white males over the age of 75. <laughs> and by the way, not that I have anything against white males over the age of 75, but you know what? You look around this NRA annual meeting and what you find is an incredible cross-section of the United States of America that the mass media is unwilling to admit exists. Thank you both for coming on this program. Hey, man, uh, first and foremost, hey, thank you for once again having me. It's always a pleasure, one, to always be at the convention, and two, to be on the show. Dude, you know I love you, Rick. Hey, man, you, love I, you back. I and, told and, you, you are the coolest man in Detroit. And you know what? <laughs> Here's what's really cool. But I'm, it's only because I'm, Ken I'm, Blanchard I'm, doesn't I'm live there. I'm flanked by my mentor, you know, Ken Blanchard. I mean, this is the guy who I was listening to years and years ago, and I was like, man, this guy is really informed, and he's laying down some serious knowledge, and... You know what? I got to meet this guy, and I'm, I'm privileged to be on the same set with him today, Pastor Ken Blanchard. Thanks, man. And Reverend, it is so good to see you again, sir. I love getting a chance to hang out with you and talk with you. You are such an amazing man and an inspiration to uh, to everybody who I think knows you. Man, it's just nice to be with 100,000 of my closest friends. Isn't this awesome? <laughs> I know, man. It's cool, Doc. It's really cool. You know, that's why I say, like, this is, is this this really truly is the world's biggest family reunion. Yeah. Because we are a family here, you know, and I was walking, I was walking outside um, as I was coming back over this afternoon, and I just overheard a woman, and it was just a fragment of a conversation, and she said, I heard the middle, she said, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big organization, and there are lots of people, and so we're not always going to agree on everything, but it's okay, because we agree on the important stuff, and man. <laughs> I, that's just the distillation uh, uh, of this. You know, we can probably we could we could probably have a uh, hundred different opinions if we ask a hundred different people. What's your favorite rifle? Right. Right. What's your favorite handgun? Yes. Uh, do, you know, what do you think of uh, 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 you know all different kinds of things? What's your favorite ammo? Right. Uh, when it comes to cultural and social issues, you're going to find a huge variety of opinions here. But when it comes to protecting our rights, is where we all come together. We all stand as one. Yeah, we're, this, we're this America right here. This is America in a, in a microcosm. You can, you can see it. You can feel it. You can, you can be breast to breast with somebody who understands what freedom feels like. This is the place right here. i got to ask you, Ken, because you live in Maryland. Yes. Where your governor has apparently lost his mind. <laughs> yeah, I know. I uh, forgot, forgot who put him in the office. You have, I'm not kidding here, in Maryland, you have a governor who is passing such restrictive, and signing such restrictive gun control laws that, that, that companies are not going to be able to operate in the state. FFLs are not going to be able to operate in the state because if a paperwork violation occurs, yeah. uh, they're going to go to prison. Where, by the way, they will become the property of the Black Gorilla family, the prison gang that has just been revealed to be running the Baltimore City Jail. That was scary, Doc. I you have yeah. 25 people who have been uh, under investigation, I believe, Jail guards. Yeah. You know, you've got a prison gang running the prison, and yet Mayor, uh, Governor O'Malley thinks that the big issue in Maryland right now in terms of public safety is going after the law-abiding gun owners. It's like a movie, isn't it? Not even in real life. You can't even think that could really happen in real life, but it's happening right in our state. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. It's like bizarro state. So what do you do when your rights are under assault, when you've got a, 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 a governor who seems more interested in, in persecuting and prosecuting the law-abiding than actually going after the, uh, the people who are already behind bars who are breaking the law? What we're doing is it's just making grassroots that much better. We're actually working that thing. There's so many people who just woke up and said, I didn't know it was this bad in Maryland. I didn't, I didn't know our politicians were like that. I'm saying yes. It's always been this way, and bad things happen when good people do nothing. Time to get off your butt and do something, and that's what we're doing now. And, Rick, you know, in Michigan, we were talking about this off the air. Michigan's a shall-issue state. Yes, we're shall-issue. Um, you got some, like, hinky, hinky laws that I, I'm, not, I'm not 
quite familiar with having grown up in Oklahoma and you know living in Virginia. There's some weird <laughs> stuff with like <laughs> pistol registration and stuff like that. I'm yeah, not, I'm not we're real one clear of the on. Few but. handful of states that still require handgun registrations. It, it, it's been something that's been on the books going back to uh, 1927. If you want the history lesson in the Ossian Sweet story, we can talk about it. Was but, this uh, another one of those racist gun control laws? Yeah, you know, basically, long story short, there was this physician doctor. He moved into a mixed neighborhood. He produced his firearms. He got into a gunfight. They defended his home, but they charged him with murder. But he was exonerated in 1925 by an all-white jury. But in the aftermath of the case, uh, the Michigan legislature enacted the 1927 Michigan Firearms Act, which created the county gun boards, created uh, discretionary licenses. Just to ensure that the right type of people... The right type of people cannot get guns. So, yeah, so we've had this law on the books, and it's time for it to go. And just remember, when when we hear... Mayor Bloomberg say that, you know, things like, like shall issue right to carry laws would be horrible. Uh, and, and we hear, you know, about the need for these discretionary uh, type of laws. Just remember that this is where this started. And, you know, I find it just as offensive. Who, who would the right type of person be today when you leave it up to the hands of uh, and the minds and the hearts of others? You know who the right person is? Well, you know what? In, in, in the cities in which black people are concentrated, that's where you find the most stringent gun control. There's still a holdover from years ago. You know, it's Listen, listen. when I met my wife, she was living in Camden, New Jersey. <laughs> All right? As a single right. mom of two kids. And let me tell you, you know, there's no way to legally get a gun and become a legal gun owner in Camden. You're going to be jumping through so many hoops. People are going to give up. And yet it's the damnedest thing. These, these criminals yes. have no trouble whatsoever accessing firearms. It's, no, it's, they don't. And, you know, I, I didn't have looked at our, at our sister city, Chicago, man. Uh, they can't legally carry a gun there. And now they're, they're dragging their feet where they have to come up with some type of concealed carry scheme to, to allow people to carry guns. And look like they're taking it down to the wire. Or they go to what I hear is constitutional carry. So It's going to be <laughs> fascinating. It's like, it's, 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 it's like a game of constitutional chicken right, right now right. between the anti-gunners in Chicago and the courts and the uh, criminal justice and, and, and the legislature and Bloomberg. From absolutely. wherever he's at, he's just throwing money in the wrong places. He doesn't belong in Chicago. He's making work there. It's unreal. King Mike of Bloombergia, as yeah. I uh, refer to him. <laughs> hey, listen, Ken and Rick, we got to take a break, unfortunately. Hey, before you know, we go, man, here, here's another present for you. Last time was a T-shirt. This time it's my token challenge coin. I love it. This Look is at how this. I, I raise money to uh, train women back home in Detroit how to defend themselves. So. This is fantastic. Listen, man, you keep up the great work. Keep fighting. Yes, sir. And we got to have you back on because we got to talk about Detroit. I've I, I never even been to Detroit, but I have a soft spot. For the people of Detroit, because yeah, I think the mass media doesn't want to cover what's going on there. They don't want to talk about the failures mm -hmm. that they've helped perpetuate with their ideology. But you know what? There are still a lot of people, a lot of good people living in that bad city. And, and they can fix it. They can change it. Hey, man, come on. We'll do it on location. We'll do the camera company show on location, on the road in Detroit. Let's All go. Right. All right. Ken, will you come with us? Absolutely. All right, man. I got your back, man. All right. Rick, All right. thank Thanks you so much. Ken, always a pleasure. Reverend Ken man. Blanchard.